Hello and welcome to Friday in the Stamping Room and Facebook Live with Carolyn. How are you guys this morning? I'm really sorry I'm running late this morning. I don't know what is happening. I think that um, I had all the best intentions to be totally here and totally ready. That's life. <laughs> That's life. And you know what? It's kind of like I was looking at the clock and I was thinking, gee, I'm really, things are going so well for me this morning. And um, then they just really all of a sudden didn't. So um, welcome for those of you that have stuck around. And good morning, Katrina. How are you? Yes, I'm normally not this late. I've It's really late. Like, it's really late. Um... I'm normally like a couple of minutes late, but normally not almost 13 minutes late. Anyways, I'm just going to get my Facebooky um, stuff on my computer going. So when I flip you guys around, I can still see your comments. So just bear with an empty chair for a second. Like, come on, Carolyn, you've already rocked up late and now you're going to be off screen. It's atrocious. Um, but that's how it is. Make sure you keep commenting as you come on in because I will read the comments once I get my act together. Okay, I can see. Ah, a blank screen. That's no good. Where am I? Where am I? You guys still coming in? Hey, Sherry. Worth waiting for. Oh, that's cool. Hey, T. How are you? Story of your life. Running late. Yes, I tend to err on the side of running late. Um, I have been much better, you know, in the last few years about being on time and thinking about what what me being late actually is is saying um, to the people that I'm being late for. Anyway, that's another story. But, um, so I am being a lot better at being late. So this is, I really, really apologise for, I'm going to stop talking about being late. I'm here now. It's all good. So um, in uh, probably one of the other things that was upsetting is I didn't get time to make my cup of coffee. So I just made a cup of tea. I like to make, you know, the the do the coffee with the big machine, but it takes forever. So we're just doing tea this morning. So I apologize in advance. Hey, Tanya, how are you? I apologize in advance for any um, mistakes I make. It's the tea's fault. And if some of you might have seen, I broke one of my favorite mugs the other day. I still have this one poor, morning, Shannon. This is um, my favorite um, pottery called Rob Gordon and this is I've had this for like about 15 years about um hi Christina um but it's my last one so I can't break it now goodness anyway have you got your teas and coffees all sorted are you crafting while I'm crafting that's what I know a lot of you guys do you get your crafting ready and then we craft together and that's kind of fun so um, what's been happening with you guys? I have had two weeks, it might have been three weeks actually off of Facebook Live. Maybe that's why I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I've had school holidays and I've tried to do Facebook Lives and keep up with my Facebooking, um, you know, before during school holidays, but it's a bit of a nightmare. So I just decided to give myself a good little break and have a holiday and now I'm back and I'm energetic and I'm excited to be sharing a really fun project with you guys today, which is all to do with mermaids. Um, good morning, Katrina. Oh, I've seen you before already, Katrina. Good morning again. Baking birthday cake. Oh, cheesecake. Delicious. And what are you doing, Vicky? You've been cleaning. Well, take a break from cleaning immediately. I give you permission. Um, so we were really lucky to be able to go across to Sydney on the school holidays and I visited some beautiful people while I was there. I visited Katrina who's actually on the um, Facebook live this morning. That was 
wonderful. We ate pancakes with their kiddos and that was lots of fun. And I visited um, some other friends that I've made with Stamping Up as well. And it was absolutely delightful. But I've got to tell you, being in the car with three primary school age kids for two solid days on the way over, we drove. So we drove from Adelaide and then we drove back. It, you know, that was long, but <laughs> we, we managed, we survived. The kids are back at school. Life is kind of getting back to normal for a little bit. Hey, 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 Judy from Florida. You're going on a holiday, Shannon. Oh, I've never been to Rottnest Island and we need to get across to WA. That might be our next long haul trip um, and do that. So I want to just do a little bit of housekeeping first before we get to the pretties. So the specials from Stampin' Up! this month are all Awesome. Um, so I've had um, some delightful people join my team this month and the reason why they're joining is because there is probably one of the best specials that I've seen from Stampin' Up for joining Stampin' Up in the last eight years. I've been with Stampin' Up for eight years and we've had a plethora of different joining specials in that time. Um, this is a really, really good one really good so you should definitely consider it um it is you you join stamp what is joining stampin up well joining stampin up means that you can demonstrate like i'm doing create a business which is an awesome opportunity um if you're not interested in creating a business but you're interested in discount of all your stampin up products then that's another opportunity with joining stampin up too there's no um there is no requirement for you to demonstrate. There is um, minimums, so you need to put in a certain amount of orders in a quarterly period. And if you don't do that, you know what? You're just no longer a demonstrator. It's as simple as that. So it's kind of like there's no there's no way to lose on this. If you like buying Stampin' Up! products and you, you know want to buy a bunch, then you might as well join under this great special um, buy everything that you want at 20% discount. If you stick around a little bit and you sell a little bit, then you can get 25% discount on your products. Um, it's it's fun. It's a great community of other crafters. So it's worthwhile considering for sure. Um, I've got a question and answer section on my blogo. So if you go across, that's just me being saying some slang for my blog. Um, if you go to carolynbenny.com and then you go to the section that says join and save up the top in the menu there's a little question and answer uh, sheet on there that I've created and you will find that most of your questions are going to be answered. But if you find that there is a question that you cannot find the answer of then just email me and I will help you out. For sure, no drama at all. Or message me. I've had some messages on Facebook recently and I'm pretty quick at getting back to them. So please do that too. So what's the special? Well, the special is normally when you join Stampin' Up! you purchase a kit. Now, it's a kit that you fill with whatever you want. So it's a big, it's a good kit because you just, you know, say, I need a big shot. You go, right, well, I'm just popping a big shot in my kit. Um, good morning, Deborah. How are you, sweet? Um, so the kit costs $169, not a penny over, you can put in less, but who would want to put in less? Um, it's free shipping and handling, so that's super cool. So it's just $169. Then you fill it with whatever you want. If you want $169 worth of scissors, go for it. Um, but that's what you do. That's pretty cool. Actually, I've completely got that wrong. Holy moly. All right, cup of tea. You don't get $169 worth of product. You get to select $235 worth of product, but you only pay $169. How have I been doing this for? Holy smokes. Anyways, so you pay $169, you select $235 worth of product. That's a great deal normally, right? But in the, in the special this month, it finishes at the end of this month. So you have like three days left to make your decision on this. 
um, you get the normal joining kit, so let you $235 worth of product, but you also get a whole bevy of other essential crafting things just thrown in on top of it. So you get a bone folder and you get a pair of paper snips and you get two D blocks. This is a block, it won't be that size, but you get two of them, they'll be a bit smaller. Um, you get a uh, grid paper. I'm going to lift up my grid paper and really regret that because I won't know where to put it. You get a packet of this. Um, what else do you get? Uh, you get the new Christmas um, stamp set, which has just been released to demonstrators. So you get that. And you get some snail. Let me show you snail. This is snail, not a little creepy crawly snail, but this is snail which is an adhesive that rolls out. I think that's it, but it's pretty good. It's worth $125, and that's extra. You don't have to pay for that, it just comes. So then after that, any products that you make after that are 25% off, uh, off retail. <sighs> See, I needed that coffee. Where was my coffee? Anyways, that is the special. I've completely confused you. I'm sorry. If you go to my blog, I've written it down and it makes sense. So please do that. The other um, special on, if you do not want to join Stampin' Up, that's okay. We still love you. Um, if you do not want to join Stampin' Up, but you would like to be my customer and I would love you to be my customer because I'm going to treat you well. Um, so if you, um, you can purchase things from my blog again, I've got a shop on there. You can purchase them in your jammies at night time, watching TV and purchasing things from my shop. Um, and at the moment this month, there's another awesome special, which is if you purchase $90 worth of product, then um, you're going to get an email voucher sent to you for um, $9 um, that you can spend next month. So you have to spend it next month, but that's pretty cool because dimensionals, you can get a packet of dimensionals for that, or you could use it as discount off of a fun stamp set or something like that. It's your choice. So they're the specials. That's the housekeeping. Yay! Housekeeping. It's done. Housekeeping. It's done. So... I can breathe a little bit now and see who's talking to me. Tanya, you're looking at the new holiday catalogue. That is true. That is a perk of being a demonstrator. We get to see all of the catalogues sooner. And if you join this month, next month, you can join all the other demonstrators who are doing pre-order. So we get to order our products early too. Um, and that's pretty awesome. I'll be doing um, a little product share in my team for all of the ribbons and the embellishments and the papers. We group purchase them and we cut them up and share them out. Um, and then you're only buying quarter instead of paying full, well, buying the whole job lot. So that's another perk of being in the, in the Midnight Inklings team. I call my team the Midnight Inklings because when I first started stamping up, that was the only time I stamped because I had little kiddos. So um, we're the Midnight Inklings. So what are we doing today? We are delving into the world of mermaids. Now, you might not think with three boys in my house that I have much of a reason to buy a mermaid stamp. And to be honest, it wasn't on my first order. Um, and that wasn't because I didn't love her. That was because I was thinking, well, what am I going to do with a mermaid stamp? But I've decided I just loved it. And I would find someone to give it to because I just loved it so much. I've seen, if you head to Pinterest, um, not now, after the Facebook Live, if you head to Pinterest, you will find so many stunning cards. But I actually didn't go before I made this card because I knew I'd be influenced by some beautiful artists. So I, you know, artist card maker. So I've done this without looking at any other cards. So I'm hopeful that um, 
Okay, so um, I'm hopeful that I, I don't know how to, I'm just blocking somebody. Um, so I've never had to block somebody live before, so there you go. So um, <laughs> I'm learning new things today, people. You can block people just easily by swiping on them. Um, so if you can still see me, you're not the blocked person. <laughs> um, anyways, so I went ahead and bought this fabulous stamp set called Magical Mermaid. And wouldn't you know it, um, I've gone ahead and found at least two people that I can send a card to almost immediately. And I think if I received a card with a mermaid on it, oh, that's what I was going to do. I forgot. I've, I'll put up in, I'll put up the photo at the end of this Facebook Live. I've got two beautiful friends, Elisa and Angela, and they sent me a mermaid rug for my birthday a few months ago. And um, so I can lay on the couch and have like a mermaid tail on. Have, have you guys seen those rugs? This rug just blows my mind, I love it. And um, I laughed and laughed and laughed when I opened up that um, birthday present. So, you know, I'm not like, I'm not insane about mermaids, but um, it is, good morning Amanda, how are you sweet? It is, they're kind of fun, aren't they? I do like the old um, fantasy novel. I do like, um, I'm a bit of a vampire, werewolf, you know, crazy fairy girl. So mermaids, they can fit into that for sure. So today I'm going to show you what cards we're making. I'm going to flip you guys over. I'm going to make sure I follow um, all of the comments. So please keep commenting. I'm also going to plug in my little earpiece so please tell me if you can't hear me um, please tell me if my hair is touching the microphone or something you know horrific and um, hey Dolores from Miami how are you you're looking forward to seeing the mermaid card Amanda um, well I hope that it all goes well it could go bad <laughs> doesn't go bad but um, watercoloring can be you know can be a case-by-case -case basis so if it's all good I've got a couple of you know if it all goes bad options but let's just you know cross cross our fingers so I'm gonna flip you guys over I'm gonna tinker a little bit with my earbud and all that kind of stuff and then we are gonna start crafting right you ready let's see what happens oh I'm gonna turn it over Okay, you can see my setup there. You can see how I hide all of the all of the stuff that I don't want you guys to see. That wasn't it's not very good when you're hiding the stuff and yet you guys can then now talk about it. Alright. So when I planned this last night, I planned it. Oh, can you hear me? I think I just muted it. Can you guys just tell me if you can hear me because I think I just muted the volume. Hey Rhonda, how are you? Oklahoma. Please someone tell me if I can can hear me oh yes awesome thank you thank you thank you guys because it said I'd muted it and that would have been bad if I would muted you guys or me probably not so bad if it was me the way I'm going this morning all right oh can you see what we're making that's what we're making now what do you think let me get my. Ah, okay. Right. It's happening, people. It's happening. Okay. You can hear me, Rhonda. Awesome. Okay. I think I'm good. I'm going to stop fiddling now because that's really boring and annoying. So, this is the card 
that we are making. I'm going to just take you guys right in there to see. It is, um, I've done some watercolouring. I've done some, this is a little bit of embossing. There is lots of lots of prettiness happening there. Um, so I hope you enjoy. So pretty. It's pretty. And I think anytime you do a rainbow, that's pretty. My earbud plugged in, people. So tell me if you can still hear me and if everything's okay. I am having troubles with the comments. Um, I'm afraid today on my face, on my page. Oh good, thank you Amanda. You guys are awesome. You're like my my tech team. Tech team with Carolyn. Okay, one more opportunity. To, I'm just refreshing my page again to see whether I can still... Okay, hey Dolores, how are you? I can see people's comments. That's awesome. I don't know, Facebook. I think you could be a little bit better with the comments. Hey, thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Christina. Okay, let's let's see. I don't know. The comments the comments that I see on my phone are so different than the ones I see on the computer, which makes it really challenging for me. Um, okay. Oh, and that's my dog Fudge. Fudgy. Okay, so I'm just going to have to wing it. No. I'm just going to have to wing it a little bit, my lovelies, and um, we will see how I go with the um, with the comments. If I can't if I can't, if I don't answer your comments straight away, I will get back to it because the comments seem to be a little bit challenging today. But, you know, that's just what happens. So I will keep refreshing and I'll keep giving it a go. So what we're going to do, I'm going to try and concentrate because Fudge is barking, the comments aren't working. All right, let's just try and concentrate okay so this is the beautiful magical mermaid um, card that I'm making it is from this beautiful set so I have purchased the set in red rubber um, in the clear mount style so this is clear mount and this is the, the mermaid stamp that I've used. Now, I haven't put the stickers on this stamp, but you can go ahead. Um, it comes with stickers. You can stick those on the back. Sometimes I don't bother um, putting on the stickers, um, especially if I'm just using it for me. If I'm doing a class, then often I will put on the stickers, but I will trim the stickers um, up a little bit so that I find that they stick a little bit better if you trim them up a little bit so um, yeah so I'll perhaps do a little DVD a little video on that another time about how I trim up the stickers so I've I'm gonna cheat a bit today because we've got a bit to get through so I have done a little bit of pre stuff so this is not a complete woe to go card but all of the essentials I think are going to be covered today I'm using watercolour paper, the Stampin' Up! watercolour paper to do, it comes in a packet like so, I'll just see whether, see there's more comments on the screen than there is on um, my laptop, which is just so infuriating, but anyways, yeah, okay, um, but um refreshed again so this is the watercolor paper it comes in a five size 
So it's 15.2 by 22.9 centimetres. And it comes in a pack, gosh, how many is in there? I don't even know off the top of my head. Uh, five. There's five sheets that come in it. So it's not, you know, like it's not a huge amount that you're actually uh, getting in that pack. So I tend to use it fairly sparingly because of that. You know, I wouldn't use like a whole um, card front in watercolour paper, not unless it was, you know, a wedding card or something, you know, really special. But that's just because I'm frugal. I don't know about you guys. I'm pretty frugal when it comes to my supplies. I mean, of course, like if you'd like to buy 50 packets from me immediately, you can head to my online store and do that straight away. But um, if you would um, are a little bit frugal like me, then um, perhaps you don't want to do that. The other option that you have is the shimmery white cardstock. And I've used that on the background um, of this particular card. So to make this water... Um, what is that? I had a little mental blank. Like a little water wash that I've made here and we're going to be doing that today. Um, I've used the shimmery white because I wanted a bit larger piece and it's great for those kinds of um, wash effects. Really, really great for that. But for this detailed water colouring, there is nothing like the Stampin' Up! watercolour paper to achieve that. So if you're really dead keen on getting some great effects, I would definitely put this watercolour paper on your wish list because I cannot rave about it enough. Um, I have in the past tried to be even thriftier and not purchase the Stampin' Up! watercolour paper and it's just... It's just not as, well, well, I'm sure there is really good watercolour papers out there. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure if you spend the money, you will get a really great watercolour paper. But, um, you know, you may as well buy Stampin' Up! Um, paper and support your local Stampin' Up! demonstrator too. So, um, rather than going off to the craft shop. So, that is the papers that I've used so as you can see here, this is the watercolour paper and I've gone ahead, this is one of my time saving things today, I apologise if you like to see complete woe to go, but this is the watercolour paper here that I've stamped our mermaid on and this is the shimmery white paper. There is ever so slight colour difference. Um, I think that the, the watercolour is a tiny bit creamier and it's... If you can see, it's got like a dimpled effect on one side. It's a bit smoother on the other side. So it just depends on what kind of watercolouring you want to do. But it's smoother on one side and it's got a little bit more of a dimpled effect on the other side. Um, whereas the shimmery white is very flat and it's very and it's got a shimmer through it. Um, you couldn't find me, Jeanette. You found me now. I think you're in the wrong video. I think you're in an old video. I, I, I apologise for that. Um, so here I've gone ahead and stamped it. Now I wanted to make sure that I stamped a really nice dark stamped image when I stamped. So that's why I stamped a little bit earlier so I can make sure I had a nice stamped image and you didn't see me just stamping out, you know, five uh, mermaids before I, I got the right effect. But with watercolouring, especially when you're colouring over the top of something, I wanted to make sure that I had a really nice um, black image. And the watercolour paper is more challenging to stamp on than your plain whisper white or the shimmery white because it's got those bumps in it. Um, you, you will find that sometimes you might need to use a stamping positioning tool like the Stampamajig just to stamp in the one place a few times to build up a nice dark colour and I've used the archival black ink that's what we're going to be stamping with today I know that we've used we used to use a lot of stays on black ink and I still love stays on but I find that the archival gives a, a nice a little bit it's easier to get a nice dark crisp black quicker 
Um, and as long as you let it dry completely before you start watercoloring, it's it works great. So um, yeah, just be just make sure you have one of those on hand. The archival black ink pad. You can also get that in basic grey, um, but um, today we're using the black. So I have got the mermaid stamp. I've also there's also another little mermaid on the um, in the stamp set and some weeds and some I think there might be bubbles, a couple of little sandy um, stamps and things. But I've kept my little um, card here pretty simple. That's my style. Um, I'm kind of working out. As I go along, it's taken me eight years to kind of work out my style. I like a lot of colour. I love watercolouring, but I also like a lot of white and I like to keep it pretty simple. I did try a more up, you know, scaled up card last night. I'm not sure how successful. You're going to have to tell me if you think um, how successful I've been with this card. So this is my stepped up version i wanted to give you a stepped up version too so here it is i'm going to scroll you in so you can see oh dear so this one you can see the two so here i've got i've actually i quite like her hair like this as well i think that's pretty she where's the where's the light so she's got kind of the tangerine tango coming through there. And I think, like I've made her hair probably a little bit more natural, but I've used her hair colour as a, as a braid there. Whereas the other one I've done, I've used um, kind of, like I, I sort of thought it might be like coral or something in her hair there. So that's kind of the two I've made. I quite liked the swirly effect. I thought that was kind of fun. But, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. So it's the, the fun thing is once you've got a stamp set, you can make it with many cards you want. And each one could be different. Um, so, yeah, that's the step one. So I'm going to put them both on my blog later on today once I've finished writing up that blog post. So you can um, have a look at both of them nice and up close. So I'm just pop this one away. Say goodbye to this one, guys. All right. So should we start actually doing something before I run out of time? Let's, I think that's probably close. I'm just going to bring that down a little bit and bring this one back in so I make sure I've X marks the spot. So this could all go pear shaped. I am warning you, it's with watercoloring, it can sometimes go pear shaped. But let's let's see what happens. Alright. Okay, I'm I'm being able to see comments now, guys, so feel free to say what well, don't say whatever you want. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> the colours I'm using in my card today, other than all the whites, is Daffodil Delight. We've got Tangerine Tango, Tempting Turquoise, get my words correct, um, Emerald Envy and Rich Razzleberry. They are a beautiful bunch of rainbow colours, I think, and um, love, 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 love those colours. Actually, almost, you could almost do away with the Emerald Envy if you mix the Turquoise and the Daffodil Delight together. But I wanted a nice, bold Emerald Envy. But I will um, I will see. Oh, hello, Leone. You're pear-shaped. Oh, my goodness. What is crazy talk? So let's have a go. Okay. Now... You love those colours together, me too. Anything with a rainbow, it's you know, it's just so lovely, isn't it? So let's just start with start with the Daffodil Delight and the Tangerine Tango first. But I want to tell you a couple of my cheats. Because that's what you're here to learn about, isn't it? All the cheats. So I have got 
my aqua painters. You know I love aqua painters. Um, oh, you'd love to see how I did the circles. Well, I really just, um, I just got my aqua painter and drew circles. But I, I'll give you a bit more info about that, Deb, um, when I do the wash in, in a bit. So aqua painters, love aqua painters. I, you know, I... I could take out shares in aqua painters probably because I just I think that they are just an essential stamping tool so I recommend them highly to anyone that likes watercoloring and likes stamping so they come in a pack of two you get one in the smaller nib and one in the larger nib they don't come all inked up because mine that's mine that I used and loved you fill them with you just your tap water and you are ready to um, to paint with them so they're kind of a brush with water already it takes the messy factor out of it it's a simple way to start normally if you guys have ever watched one of my videos where i've used the aqua painter you will know that i am a sucker for the small nib one i tend to get rid of the large nib one almost immediately and and i use it for washes but it's really probably going to be the hero of today the first thing i do when i'm watercoloring um, in this kind of way where I really want to blend <clears throat> is I, I actually go ahead with just plain water and wet the image so now I promised myself I would not rush the watercoloring today because I'm always worried about time I know you guys you know as much as you know we love to get together you probably don't want to invest your whole Friday with me um, so I'm always trying to be timely but with watercoloring I just can't rush it so you you guys you're you're in for the full watercoloring experience this morning it's not fast if you're um, if you're looking for a fast card making technique watercoloring is not it but it is it's so deliciously enjoyable that um, I, I just think if you if you love to color then watercoloring is really going to be that step up for you so if you can see you can see that there's a little gloss a water gloss over the image and that's just where I run that water right up to the edges there on the tail now I find this helps the blending a little bit um, it helps just the blending of the colors together and it also helps keep the watercolor where we want it to be so with um, this one we're actually going to cut out the um, uh, I'm just making sure I'm not missing any messages um, I'm going to cut out the mermaid but say, for instance, you were doing a piece where you were keeping the whole background and you didn't want to cut it out, making sure it stayed within the lines would be really, really essential. It's still essential for us in the respect that I don't want it to bleed up into her skin um, too much or um, the hair onto the skin either. So now all I've done is I've opened up my ink pad, and I, but I haven't shut the the lid like I normally would I've got a well of color and you do that just by squeezing when you're opening the lid squeezing the lid and the the ink pad together and you get a little bit of a palette of color on your inside of your lid which I like to use often so we're going to pop in the large aqua painter in there I'm just gently squeezing a little bit so a little bit of water comes out and this this as I said this is where it all it all happens so now I'm just I'm not even squeezing my aqua painter at all I'm just letting that ink come out and because I've got the water there already it's just dispersing nicely itself <clears throat> it's running out and I'll put a little bit more color and it nice and bright and like so so it's it's wet but it's not runny 
okay you don't want it we don't want to wash we just want it wet okay there we are that's color number one daffodil delight oh i know what i forgot to do i forgot to get a little towel let me second I am. Um, I have a paper towel. As you can see, mine's well used. It's probably time for a new paper towel. But I like to have the paper towel handy because then I get rid of that colour, squeezing the aqua painter a little bit, and then we're on to the next colour. So this is tangerine tango. This is probably my um, orange colour of choice in the Stampin' Up range. this I'm just going to make sure that everything is in the shot okay so now you can see what's going on all right then we're going to add some color now I went back into the yellow and I'm bringing up the tangerine. I'm just going to go down and let that naturally disperse through the yellow. I'm using these little guide lines on the that the artist has drawn for us. How's that looking? What do you think, guys? We're going to keep going. We're moving swiftly. And then I'm going to Tempting Turquoise. There's a lot of ink pads open, which is when it gets a bit dangerous. Now, this is where I really want to be careful because I don't want the Tempting Turquoise to dip up onto her skin. So I'm just carefully doing that. I might even bring it in a little bit more so you can really see the colours there. And the Emerald Envy. Now the Emerald Envy is quite a bold color so it can have a tendency to take over so just want to be careful with that now i'm going down into the orange to bring that emerald envy down Needs just a tiny bit more encouragement because that orange, probably the tangerine tango, dried a little bit more than what I should have let it. Now you can see it's just getting a little bit muddy. There, the colours sometimes can get a little bit too brown. So I'm just going to bring in my, my towel there. Bring back in some fresh colour. I'm using my towel to get rid of all the colour that's on my brush. Now I want to just bring a little bit more tempting turquoise in. I've added some more colour and I'm bringing it down into. What do you think? Are you with me, guys? Love that rainbow effect. Yeah. Okay. 
that. All right, so I'm just going to a little bit more blue. I'm not going to get. I just feel like it's still it's something there that's not working. So I'm going to add more green. When in doubt, add more green. Okay. I think this is where I stop before I make it, I get too muddy with it. Um, and that is, um, then I would put that to one side to let dry for a little bit. Um, just because it's quite wet now. Or you could use, if you're impatient, you could use a heat drying tool to dry that up. But um, I was very impatient and I actually went ahead and... Mm. all right let's let's continue on with this one and see if I can make it all work okay so let's see what do you think guys I'm not seeing any comments and I'm not sure if that's just me okay Alright, so I'm going to shut the ones I'm not using. So I'm now going to put away the Emerald MB and the Daffodil Delight Tangerine Tango. So it's just the Tempting Turquoise and the Rich Razzleberry for her hair. I'm going to do the perfect, the purple hair today. So let's see how we go. Tempting turquoise and rich razzleberry. Again, I've just blotted off all of my colour on my aqua painter and I'm going over just to wetten. Now I'm being I'm gonna be really really careful not to get anywhere close to the tail because the watercolour, as soon as you apply water, that colour is going to be drawn up into it. And it's just going to be a bit messy. I think that either just there is a little bit of hair or her hand. And I'm not quite sure. Oh, was it gone? Oh, well, that's why I was thinking it was weird. Okay, I'm back. Good. Yay, okay, good. All right, so are we back with everybody? Yay, back, back, back. I don't know what's going on today, guys. The internet. Who who knew it was going to be so tricky? So here I've got the Tempting Turquoise, and I'm going to put that all through her hair. I see if you... Um, if you're on Pinterest and so everywhere at the moment that rainbow unicorn hair is really popular so that's what um, inspired me if if it's not something well, I'm not sure that I'm really a rainbow unicorn hair girl but it's very pretty and I think it's very pretty to draw with so okay I like seeing other people's hair in rainbow unicorn colour. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about rainbow unicorn. Okay, so here I've got the rich razzleberry. And I'm starting up the top and letting them bleed together. The other colour that's really nice is um, berry burst as well wanted to add a little bit kind of more of a pinky red instead of a purple so. what do you think now I 
blending them together a little bit. That's when it really starts looking nice. Darkening up the tempting turquoise. Okay, so that's that's the first kind of level of colouring um, there. And now I'm going to put that one to one side and let that dry. And I've got one here I made last night that was all dried and I've actually gone ahead and fussy cut it out. So you didn't have to watch me fussy cut. I know you guys love to watch me fussy cut, haha, but um, I... I thought that I would save you um, that because it's a little bit intricate and it took just a tiny bit of time to do. So here she is. She's pretty similar to the one that we've just completed. I think this one will dry up a little bit. That one will dry up a little bit. Um, it, you know, it kind of lightens up a little bit when you dry so now I just wanted to finish up because if you have a look here, this so that's the card one. There is a few differences, so I just wanted to show you what um, how I actually got those differences. the The hair here is very pretty, but as you can see, there's a little bit more detail on the card, and I achieved that by using my um, Tempting Turquoise Stampin' Right marker. So I've actually just left the skin the natural colour of the cardstock. So it's too white, like it's not, um, you know, it's not normal colour skin, it's too white. But um, it's it's just for the, for the sake of the exercise, I just left it that colour of the cardstock. So let me show you how I've just added a few extra highlights and to her hair so I wanted to let's get you nice and close so you can see how the bottom is blue and the top is purple and that works great but if you bring some tempting turquoise in as as kind of darker highlights It makes the hair look a little bit more interesting. This adds more movement, I think. I just need to kind of follow where it comes from. go up and you just keep adding until you're happy with the with the color does that make can you see that just adds a little bit of extra I've also if you just want it to be a little bit more defined here you can just add a little bit more tempting turquoise Adds a little bit more definition. The other thing I've done is I've used my Smoky Slate Stamp and Write marker and I've just popped a bit of shadow underneath her arm there and down here I have to turn, I'm sorry, it's not um, the best to watch, but I can't. And just there under her hair as well.
like so. Now I will tell you that um, um, oh, there we go. The so that might help with the skin color there as well, Vicky. The other thing that I've used is um, white gel pen. Now Stampin' Up used to sell these white gel pens. We don't any longer, and I know I should have made it like so. You know. Once it's it's no longer sold by Stampin' Up, we should imagine that it doesn't exist. But the fact of the matter is I could not function without my white gel pen. So you can, um, I've actually got mine from the, um, the newsagent. So I, I really think this is an essential card making tool is the white gel pen. And the, and the fact that you can get them lots of places means that it's, it's really not a specialty item you can um, go down to get them we stamp up doesn't need to sell non-specialty items but that just makes the the little I think it looks really cute in her hair to have that kind of little bit of white now what the thing that's going to make it all look rather delicious is to add the shimmery clear wink of Stella to it that's just gonna that just takes it up uh, notch so it's just go straight over all of your coloring once you've let it dry and oh I must show you another little trick as well with that white gel pen so just shimmer 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 is the shimmer showing on the video sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't even my husband, I think, was impressed with the shimmery mermaid that I made when I showed him last night. Normally he just, you know, goes, yeah, yeah, that's nice, dear. But he actually even was impressed. That I think the shimmer is showing. Now here, I don't know how that happened, but I've got a little bit of blue that's run onto her skin. If you have a white gel pen, it, I actually use it as a bit of a white out sometimes. So I've just gone over that little blue bit and now it's not quite so noticeable. So that's just a little trick with um, the white gel pen as well. It can give you a bit of a get out of jail card um, free with your colouring. Okay, so the mermaid is pretty much done. Um, I'm going to quickly show you because I think this is, you know, we are getting long, but um, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do the wipe the water wash. So I've got here a piece of nine by oh what was it nine by twelve shimmery white cardstock. I've cut down there. I'm using my large blender pen. A big pun, aqua painter, and I'm going to do a really nice big wash of colour. I worked before, I worked out before that I really you couldn't put too much of the emerald envy on because it just made the um, you know like it kind of washed out the mermaid a little bit. So just make sure you don't get mostly light colour behind. Let's get lots and lots of water going. Now, I was asked earlier how I did those circles in the other card. Or when I'm coming here and I'm doing the the wash of colour, instead of coming in and just doing a blob, you just go in and you do the circles. So just do circle, circle, and then bring in the next colour and do your circles with that too. So in here. It's not very technical, is it? You just put it in a blob. Blob of colour. You can see there is lots of water. I've made that super. See the water's all moving around. It's it's wet. This is not a fast drying technique unless you've got a water. Uh, unless you've got a heat gun ready, or you can patiently go have a coffee and wait for it to dry. 
Now I've got Animal Envy and I just wanted, you know, I wanted it to be mysterious dark green waters that the mermaid was floating off into. And I like, like if you do like swirls, it kind of looks mysterious. Don't you think? Really mysterious. So that is how I did the mysterious mermaid waters. If you just leave it like so and don't touch and make it nice and flat, it's going to dry pretty much where you've left it. Just it's going to seep a little bit. Um, but if you heat gun it, it will it will kind of move around a little bit more and drive a little bit more at haphazard. So here is so that's that one. You yes. love the shimmer, Vicky. Yeah, me too. Love the shimmer. So I'm going to bring back in this one again so you can see. So when I, instead of doing the blob, I've just used my aqua painter and drawn circles. So I did all the blue first. <clears throat> and then I came back and I did a little bit of green on those circles to, to get that effect. So just to aid in the time that we've got, I did a, a watercolour wash last night. And I also did some heat embossing for one of the sentiments, Mermaid Kisses and Starfish Wishes, which is pretty cute. And I'm just going to quickly finish up the card for you today. We've got our gorgeous mermaid that we have finished colouring there. And isn't that so sweet? It's just cute. I love it. I think that, you know... Whatever age you are, receiving a, a pretty mermaid card would be would be pretty nice, I think. So I'm just popping on dimensionals on the back. And I want her little fishy tail to come off the, the end of the card a little bit. Hey Kayla, how are you? We're making mermaids. So like so. Okay. Check that out. That is I'm pretty happy with myself about that. The other thing that I want to use is the tiny little um oh what are they call Oh, help me out, people. This. Eek, lost my earbud for a second there. Eek, goodness. Um, the little tiny sequins. So a few little sequins. Now, I use the fine tip liquid glue, which is just super super good and I, I think it's I think the rule of threes applies really um, which is or odd numbers just to have some odd numbered if you're going to put embellishments on a card just keep them odd numbered I think that works okay so I put on five mini tassels <laughs> Not mini tassels, sequins. The trick with the glue, the me, um, the fine tip glue, is that you need to put that little pin back inside of it when you're not using it because it makes sure that the that the um, oh, I really need a coffee. My brain is not working. How are you guys going? You hanging in there? The mini sequins, um, a little bit tricky to get off but that's good because they don't fall off easy when you're doing when you're using it as a string I'm just going to perhaps I should have organized this earlier too apologies okay well this is live crafting for you people sometimes you're just watching a woman pull sequins off of a string and that's about as exciting as it gets all right now, you're sitting and watching in the car. 
Ah, oh, coffee hit me. Oh my goodness, coffee is coffee will be happening about a minute after I get off this Facebook live. So I've just put tiny little dots on. I have put my little sequins. Now we do not sell these um, these uh, tweezers. Again, I'm selling all the stuff that isn't Stampin' Up! today. I got them from a craft uh, fair that I was running with Stampin' Up! and I found these tweezers. One of my ladies uh, who's actually got Parkinson's, she uses tweezers all the time. And I just thought, well, actually, we really should sell these um, craft tweezers. I should, ring, I should message Stampin' Up! and tell them to do it immediately. Carolyn likes it, we must get one. But um, they're pretty awesome if you if you know you're dealing with these tiny things. So it's not okay. One last one. Oh my goodness! I'm probably losing you all. You're falling asleep. There we are. Sequins are on. Oh, okay, I got the sequins on. So that's kind of it for the prettiness. I've got a little bit of this thick white cardstock. We get it in A4 size and then I just cut it in half. I'm, I like long thin cards. That's kind of the cards that I've found I, I like the most. So I always cut the cardstock from top to bottom in half. It's 10.5 centimetres. And then I use my Stampin' Trimmer. And I pop the card back in this way with my bone folder, or you can use the there's a little um, there's a swiper on there. I'm just love my bone folder, and put in a score line at fourteen point nine is is the size that I like. So then you fold it over. Now people often ask me, Carolyn, why do you just not? Um, why do you just not fold it? Why do you put the score line in? Well, I just think that it gives a better score at the end. It just makes the card sit a little bit better. And using the bone folder to really pop in that that crease, make that crease nice and strong, I think helps with the card standing up as well. And, you know, even though we're handmade cards, we don't want to use a toothpick to pick up the glue for secrets. Hmm, hmm, good idea, Vicky. Um, we don't want to, you know, we don't want it to look handmade because it doesn't even stand up. You know, you want to at least make your cards stand up. So using, putting in a score line and then putting in a nice strong, um, using a bone folder to make that nice, strong, crisp um, fold is really a good idea to go. So here I've got the finished little cardie here. Oh my goodness, she's just so pretty. I think most people would enjoy getting that. I don't think you have to be a kid to get something like that at all. It's not like a kiddie mermaid. I think it's, um, she could be, she's, she's ageless. So here I've, I matted that one up once actually, I forgot to tell you that. So it's shimmery cardstock, then I've matted it once onto some whisper white. And then we've got the thick um, cardstock there. And that is, so that one is Mermaid Kisses and Starfish wish, Wishes. And that one is Have a Magical Birthday. But um, yeah, pretty similar. And then we've got the stepped up version there again which is I'll never stop believing in you with the little tassel that one I like the tassel and, and I'm crazy for these mini sequins so I hope you guys enjoyed that today and enjoyed some tips on the watercoloring that's it's it's a little bit fiddly and I know that a lot of you will go oh gosh I could never do that but with watercoloring it's all about practice you need to do some practice so, okay, I'm going to press over, see my hand for a minute, pop it. Hey, there I am! <laughs> so, for those of you that stuck, 
the whole way. Thank you. That was a little bit of a long one, but it was, um, it's pretty. And there was lots and lots of tips in there for watercoloring. So, um, it's, it's a fun, anytime you're doing rainbow, that's lots of fun. So I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. If you are somewhere, um, like me, that's cold, stay warm. And, um, otherwise, um, make sure you head to my blog, over the weekend I'll have more things going up there over the weekend and into next week and if you're interested in putting in those orders for that discount remember the nine dollar voucher discount uh, nine dollar voucher special finishes at the end of this month and also the joining special finishes at the end of this month so if you've got any questions about that sing out that's what I'm here for all right cheerio guys I will catch you again next Friday for another Facebook live okay bye